human body is comprised of trillions and trillions of cells that form different tissues and organs. Each of these cells specialize in different functions, such as some cells make uh, muscle fibers, some other cells make skin cells, uh, skin of your body, and uh, many of these cells are performing millions and millions of functions at all times with exquisite precision and accuracy. However, environmental factors and genetic mutations can derail this process which can lead to diseases. Take for example cancer. It is now the second leading cause of uh, death worldwide. In fact, according to the American Cancer Society, now one in every sixth person in the world who dies is, di is dying because of cancer. And this is more than HIV, tuberculosis and malaria combined. Worse, these numbers are continue to be growing at ever, ever increasing pace. This means that in this room, we'll have at least a couple of dozens of people who will be directly affected by cancer. Unsurprisingly, there are many medical and engineering efforts which are trying to address this problem and developing very different kinds of technologies and therapies which can treat cancer effectively. In fact, for one given patient, we have gotten really good at treating most of their cancer. Notice I said the word most. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at an example of a person with advanced metastatic melanoma. Upon targeted therapy for a few weeks, the tumor goes away completely and uh, the patient is essentially tumor free. However, after a few weeks of treatment, the tumor comes back even stronger. Worse, it is no longer sensitive to drugs. This process is generally defined to be called uh, drug resistance. And this process is neither new nor is it specific to cancer. In fact, it has been implicated in many other diseases and their treatments, for example, tuberculosis, HIV, so on and so forth. Indeed, developing a lasting and uh, the secret to develop lasting and uh, effective therapeutic strategies lies in understanding how do cells develop resistance. What exactly is going on? Some of the earliest insights into the functioning of how cells acquire resistance were provided by very elegant works more than half a century ago by uh, the physicist Max Delbruck and microbiologist Salvador Luria, who studied resistance in bacteria. They showed that in a population of bacterial cells who were going to survive the virus attack were defined already by a genetic mutation. That is, they were controlled by Darwinian processes of natural selection. And we begin to think how could this uh, be, be related to cancer. Going back to the same example, in the initial patient, there are many cancerous cells amongst which there is one red cell which is different from the others, which carries a cancer mutation. When you add drug, every other cell dies, but there is a cell which is primed to survive, and then it goes on to repopulate the tumor. The very idea that cancer is resistance is a genetic phenomena has dominated the field and the scientific school of thought for many, many, many years. And this obsession is partly also aided by the fact that we can sequence things very cheaply and affordably and it's very accessible. Uh, at the same time, we have now realized that because cancer is a single cell phenomena where everything happens at the level of single cells and every cell is different from the other, there have been a concerted effort uh, to identify all of these cells and look for their properties. And I am a part of that group where I am an engineer trying not only to just find these rare cells in the population, but also calculate their properties, observe what they're doing differently. And these rare cells often are in the order of thousands, so it is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Working as a Schmidt Science Fellow in the lab of Arjun Raj and uh, at University of Pennsylvania, uh, which has recently showed that what initially appeared to be a Darwinian method of natural selection could be far more complex and far more rich. That means that cells which were going to survive the drug treatment may not be genetic because of genetic mutation in them. What do I mean by that? If you look at all these cells which are genetically identical over time from a cancer patient, you see that some cells are different than others. More importantly, these cells are transiently going into a blue state and going back into the white state and then going back into the blue state. So it's a transient nature. Importantly, when you add drug to these cells, the cell which was blue at the time of drug treatment is the one that is going to survive the treatment. And uh, so clearly this is a very uh, clinically relevant uh, question and uh, unfortunately we still do not understand what exactly is going on. And there are good reasons for it. 
because one, it is a very rare phenomena. These cells are one in few thousands. More importantly, this is a rare phenomena, not just in space, but rare phenomena in time. So imagine uh, th thinking about this in terms of needle in a haystack problem. So we have a needle, which is one in a few thousands, but this needle is becoming hay, and a hay is becoming a needle. So it is a conceptually very difficult problem to solve. Because of this difficulty, uh, many in the field and uh, in, the, in, the in the science community have suggested or philosophized what could be going on. And many times, uh, because of frustrations or uh, just because of the nature of the problem, we begin to think that established principles, which already biology community knows, cannot explain this behavior and that we need some new spooky mechanism which and helps us understand this phenomena. As a Schmidt Science Fellow, I worked with a very talented mathematician and we used an interdisciplinary approach and combined uh, principles from mathematics, engineering and uh, experimental biology to show that you do not need any specific mechanism to give rise to these cells. In fact, you just need uh, to understand how cells uh, give rise to uh, an RNA from a gene, and that is enough to explain this behavior. Now, this is only one side of the story. The other side of the story is once this cell survives, then it no longer goes back into the white state. It forms a new stable state, which is red, and then it starts to populate again. And this phenomena has been reported uh, by many people in the last couple of years, but when you uh, look more closely at it, you find that the dynamics and the things you observe are far more rich uh, than what people initially thought. Specifically, just as I showed you that in the initial population of cells, which all look the same, you could have very interesting cells which have very important functional consequences. You see that in these cells which emerge out of drug, they look, some cells, not all cells look the same. What do I mean by that? From cells which were all given the same kind of drug treatment, some cells which come out of it, they only prefer to grow on top of each other. Then there are some other cells which are long and thin. Yet there is another class of cells which are completely different from the other classes. What is going on? And why do we need this diversity? Does this diversity mean anything? We have different shapes and sizes. Do they translate into different functions? Can we identify them with the f about their molecular architecture based on uh, their, their morphology? And to do this, what I did was from a plate of cells, I started to systematically isolate these different kinds of cells and look for different properties. And we find that these cells, which, come, which look different, also have different molecular makeup. More importantly, when you do some functional tests on them, or you test for different functions, you see differences. For example, SEM cells are better at migrating than others, which is a function that is often used as a proxy for noting how well a cancer cell can migrate, in, uh, can invade a tissue. However, this process of manual isolation is very laborious, and it cannot be scaled. More importantly, oftentimes you are not sure whether you have exactly isolated the right population of cells because of the, the human intervention which is involved. To get around this problem, we, uh, as a Schmidt Science Fellow, I started developing a high throughput protocol uh, platform where we can uh, get around this problem. What do I mean by that? Going back to the same cancer cells which are all genetically identical, by using clever genetic technologies, we can lab label each cell uniquely such that each cell can be uniquely defined by a specific barcode. Once you have labeled each cell se uh, separately, you can then add drug to this population of cells, where you will see that most of the cells which are going to die, indeed die, and then there are a couple of cells that remain. Each of these cells have a unique barcode defined by their color here. Now, over time, these cells start uh, forming colonies, which uh, uh, fortunately for us, we can now identify these colonies by unique barcode. So each colony share the same unique barcode. Now this is very powerful because with this, we can now do all the experiments in one single experiment. We mix up all the colonies together, but if we have a way to recover the barcodes, we do not need to separate them individually. So we can do molecular profiling and many different things for looking for different properties of these cells uh, all at once in one single experiment. In fact, this kind of technology gives us a power to increase our output by 100 fold. So clearly this has, this has a very huge uh, implication in the studies of drug resistance. And that's not it. What we can also do is we can study for their functions. Imagine a case of uh, putting these cells through different functions and finding uh, which ones do better at what. Just like having a cell Olympics where you can put all these cells together and you put them through different tests such as how well do they migrate, how well do they grow, 
how robust or durable are they to extreme conditions. And then all you have to do is pick up the winning cells and then you can recover the barcode to know that which types of colonies are better at which function. So clearly, this allows us to do multi-scale analysis of different properties of the system, their origins, and their functions. Now, we can, this is very nice, and uh, we, we can really scale up the process of identifying these different uh, structures and different uh, properties. But if we take a step back and think of uh, more deep and fascinating biological questions, uh, you begin to ask, what is the source of this diversity? If the initial population is the same, what is the source of this diversity? Why do we get different end states even though we started from the same initial genetically identical states? One option could be that because of the stress of the drug, uh, you have one cell just trying to find a way to survive. And there are a few different ways to survive and they just end up reaching one of the few end states. In another situation, what you can find is there is a blue cell, but some, there are some other blue cells which are not exactly the same blue cell, slightly different, and that defines their end state. In yet another scenario, you could have different blue states which are, uh, there's more diverse blue states in the initial population. Remember, they're all genetically the same. So they could be blue in terms of their molecular makeup. But because there are only a few ways to survive uh, the drug, they try to reach different endpoints, but it's not a one-to-one -one correlation. All these questions have very uh, profound and direct uh, relation with how we understand drug resistance and in general functioning of the cell. In fact, we can also ask a couple more philosophical questions. For example, why do we need this diversity? Is it because different, uh, in a tumor, you need different cells to do different functions? Maybe you need some cells to migrate to different parts of the body, some other cells which can divide fast and keep the tumor high volume or yet some other cells which are just susceptible or not susceptible to different changes in the environment. That means it's, it's, it could be a scenario of division of labor. Or there could be a different scenario where there's a winner takes all. There is one kind of colony which is just better than all other colonies and they are going to take over the entire population. And both these scenarios have different implications for how we approach drug resistance. In one case, we want to eliminate all of them or find a different root cause. In a different case, we want to go for the most devastating ones. Now, with this, the, the main message I want to show, uh, to tell you is that every cell counts, but some cells count matter than others, uh, more than others. Thank you.